Hello guys, I hope y'all are having a good day today. Oh, this is gonna be, I don't know how short, how long of a video, but just doing some work uh, in front of the flow hood today. Uh, my main goal is just sending some things to grain. Uh, I'll be discussing multi-spore plates, that sort of thing. Uh, but that's kind of what I'm sending today. So we'll talk about that some, and uh, I'm just gonna go through my process of what I'm doing and let y'all watch what's happening, and hopefully, you'll get something useful out of it. So this one is just, this is a T0 plate, I guess you can see. Uh, several various dicarions on there. If you look at the back here, you can see there's some little yellow spots I don't really care for. So not every multi-spore plate is perfect to send right off the bat. Sometimes there's a little bacteria or yeast or something. Uh, I'm gonna show you how I deal with that. There's a few different things you can do. Um, a lot of people will just save transfers, work them forward till they're cleaned up, and then use those. I like to try to get a multi-spore plate if I can. Uh, so that will be a foggy one. Uh, that will be what I'm trying to do here. I'm gonna try to remove or leave behind the bad sections and just use the sections that have a few different dicarions that are clean looking. So anyway, I'm gonna try to get some of the fog out of this plate real quick. I find if I leave the lid on it, just kind of sling it off and it'll, it's kind of a mess. You end up with water on your desk or whatever, your worktop. I'll go wipe that up. It should be clean. It came out of a sterile plate, so it's not a real concern. You just don't want to have a mess. We'll clean that up with an alcohol soaked rag. And then I'm going to label my plate. So let's see what I got here. This is Albino Gumby times Albino Emerald Gates. Albino Gumby M2 crossed with Albino Emerald Gates. ISO 2, Monocarion number 3. All right. Gumby Gates. This is an F2. Zero backup. So I put BU. That lets me know that I'm backing up my T0 plate. So this will be my sort of my rescue plate. If things go wrong with sending this one and it fails in the grains or in the fruiting chamber uh, and you know craps out, I still have my backup transfers on here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to sterilize my scalpel and get ready to take some backups. I'm just going to sanitize it with alcohol first. Make sure there's anything, you know, it might be in here or something where it'd be hard to get to or just anything where I've touched the handle or anything that the alcohol has a chance to clean it up some before I sterilize. Still going to sterilize it, so I'll do that now. I just go all the way in pretty deep into the junction there to get the whole connector hot. Um, so that hopefully anything that's caught in that juncture gets cooked. And I'll just back out, finish sterilizing the blade, do a good red hot all the way along the length of it. keep everything in frame today. I've actually tried to film this one a couple times and I keep taking my plates out of frame where you can't see what I'm doing. So I'll try to do better about that on this one. So hopefully I can publish it. All right, so I've got my backup plate ready. Uh, I've got my scalpel ready to take transfers. And let me see, I might can zoom in a little bit and still let y'all see what's going on without losing it in the frame. So re sanitize now that I've touched my camera. Good alcohol on my fingertips. All right. All right. I've got my plate unwrapped. I'm going to take the lid off, set it aside, and I'm going to look at my plate here. Now, I've got Primordia showing up on there, so there's a pretty good chance those are healthy cultures as far as that goes. But when I look at the back, I do have those yellow spots, so I don't want to get that brown stuff. That could just be, I don't know, I don't like it, so I'm going to avoid that. So I'm just going to kind of look, see where that is. And then go and try to take a piece where it's not. So over here, this one looks fairly rhizomorphic. It's part of the same colony that's pinning, but it looks healthy here. I'm just going to take a little transfer out. Maybe a little too little. 
but near the contamination. Smaller is better than large. So I did get a transfer there. Get that out of my way. All right. Now I'm going to go re-sterilize in case that one was bacterial. And grab another. So re-sterilized. And we're going to look here and just find us another one. So this is one dicarion. It germinated here. It met one of these others and made it. And now it's making probably this one. It's making pins over here. So I'm going to go to this one. It looks fairly organized. This will be a separate dicarion that made it with one of these or somewhere up in here. But it looks fairly uniform and rhizomorphic and healthy. So we'll grab a transfer of that. And we'll save that one. And re-sterilize in case it was had a little funk on it. And I'll look, make sure I didn't have any of those yellow spots there. Alright, then I'm gonna look again. We've got this up here starting to make some primordia. So that's probably a good healthy culture. There's also some primordia over here, so we'll probably go for those two. There's also this nice rhizomorphic patch there that's got a few primordias on the top. Don't know if y'all can really see that. Yeah, you can see those little specks starting to pop up. Those are early pins starting to form. So I'm gonna go look at this area here. No yellow, no funk. So I'm gonna grab a little transfer of that. And plate that. And I'm gonna re-sterilize. And pick another one. Let's see, let the blade cool a minute. We're gonna look here, I don't see any yellow there. Nothing funky looking. And that's that nice, fairly rhizomorphic spot there with a the primordia forming. So we'll grab a transfer of that. Normally I would not necessarily hold the plate like this. I don't like the way it's not in the flow. I would normally hold it to the side and work, but I want y'all to be able to see what I'm doing. And if this plate fails, it's not the end of the world for me. I've got more cultures. So let's re-sterilize one more time. And I just grabbed various dicarions off this plate. Uh, a lot of people would probably just do this and throw this plate out because there is those kind of off looking spots. Uh, I'm just gonna go through and try to save it anyway. I don't mind wasting a bag of grain and it might work. So let's see, let me pick another spot. We've got some primordia forming here, you can see. So that's probably, I don't know if you can see that. See those little specks there. That's little hyphal knots, primordia, starting to form. Uh, one of the two. So uh, I'm going to grab a little transfer from that area. Make sure it doesn't have any yellow in it. Nothing funky looking from the bottom. So we'll save that one. Now I've got, let's see, you want to five cultures. I might grab one more from the middle, or put in the middle. And that should basically give me quite a few various dicarions saved on another plate if this one does fail. So let's look one more time and see if we can find anything that's fairly clean and looks good that we haven't selected yet. Hadn't really gotten anything from this patch, hadn't gotten anything from that big patch, hadn't gotten anything from that spot there. That one's got some yellowness, I don't think I'll stay away from it. This looks fairly clean there. That's all fairly clean, that's all fairly clean. We've already got that one. So this one, this one, probably one of those two. Let's see, this one looks fairly rhizo right here, starting to get some rhizomorphs growing under that toe and toe, so we'll take a little transfer of it. Rhizomorphs aren't necessarily an uh, indicator that a culture is better than another, but generally a good sign that it's good healthy cube mycelium at the least. All right, so now I'm gonna turn it over and look. It basically looks to me like most of this plate is good. All the funk is over here on this one side. So I'm just gonna cut that out where I avoid it. There's a little speck here maybe, um, and some tiny stuff, but I suspect those are all right. This is maybe a little yeast or bacteria or something on the plate. So I'm just gonna go take a look, try to get a better idea of exactly what I wanna cut out. So from basically about where my finger starts, I just kinda wanna go straight across to over here where my thumb ends. So I'm just gonna go in there and cut that out look at it that pretty well isolated all the funk on that side so now I'm gonna go re-sterilize and then I'll cut this side into wedges to inoculate into my grain I'm just gonna re-sterilize real quick normally this would be a little faster project and I wouldn't be talking but I'm trying to show you all what I'm doing so uh, I don't really mind if this one does fail we're just going through some 
uh, education stuff here. So anyway, I'm going to look at that one more time. And I'm going to pause and shift the camera focus so y'all can see the next part of the process better where I actually inoculate the grain bags. Stand by. Okay, hopefully that's set up where y'all can see what's happening. Let's see. I'm going to re-sanitize my hands. Now I've got my grain bag over here ready to go. Well, not quite ready to go. This is pre-sterilized grains. Uh, just oats is what I use. Just kind of squeeze them a little bit and break them up. That's what I generally do. Make sure everything's kind of loose. And I'll kind of squish it. That way it helps the bag stand up where this flap won't fall over and, uh, you know, touch anything and get funky. So then I'm going to just spray it down with alcohol. Get up in these gussets good. And then I'm going to work the alcohol up towards the top of the gusset. Get in all those crevices real well so that when I cut this off, there's just no chance of anything much funky in there. Get everything sanitized. Oh, now this should be fairly ready to go. Oh, let's see. So now I've got my plate over here. So you can see that. Nope. All right, so there's my plate. Uh, fairly ready to send, or that's the plate we just worked on. So I'm going to get my scalpel ready. This is a little awkward with the camera angles. The camera's kind of in my way. And I can't see what all I'm doing, but we'll see. I'm going to sterilize, sanitize my scalpel. Just wiping off the handle. Anything funky that might have been on there. And then I'm going to sterilize the blade. That's kind of the normal procedure. Just going in. I'm maybe got a little overkill on that. All that stuff, but it never hurts to sanitize and sterilize and just the more the merrier when it comes to staying clean and sterile. All right, so that is now sterilized. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna open my plate up, get where y'all can see it. Hopefully my hands are a little bit slippery with the alcohol still, so I need to be careful. All right, let's see y'all can see that. So I'm just gonna cut, this is the clean side. That's the funky side, so I'm just gonna cut this clean side into pieces so that I can inoculate into the grain fairly easily. And then, let's see, I'm going to take around the edge here. See how this has grown up towards the edge? There's a good chance that mycelium sort of grew over the overlap. And then if it has touched the outside where the lid came on, it could be bacterial or something. That's likely how that bacteria got in there or something. So I'm going to go and take that out. I'm going to re-sterilize real quickly. Let's get my blade good and hot and clean. All right, and then I'm going to remove this outer area from it so that that won't go with us. So just kind of go around the edge and leave that perimeter on there. That way when you flake your flakes off, this stuff around the edge that might have had some bacteria on it will stay where it is. So I'm just going to go around here and now I'm going to take a flake out. Oop, no, I'm not because i got to open my bag. Alright, I'm going to set that aside and get ahead of myself. Alright, i got everything sanitized. Open my bag up. Now I just want to do this somewhat slowly up in front of the hood. I don't want to wolf air in there real quick. It could suck a downdraft or draw in some contaminants from out of the flow. So I'll just delicately open that, holding it below the opening so that my fingers aren't near the top where anything could get in there. And just hold the top open like that or get it to where it will stay open like that. And then I'm going to try to load my bag with agar transfer. So I'm going to re-sterilize since that took a second. Sure, my blade's good and clean. All right. Now I'm just going to go in here and take some. I don't want to touch this side because that's the side that's funky, right? So I'm going to go in here, just flake off a piece. Hopefully, y'all can see that. Oops, my blade's still hot, so it's melting through. And then I'm going to go just drop that in. Stay in a way. I don't want to get over the top of the bag. So just take my flakes, drop it in. Try to work over this open part of the plate here so my scalpel is over open area and not dropping stuff in to my thing and flick that in. Same thing here, just kind of lift it up from underneath. Get a little sticky. I'll try not to go in deep all the way to the junction, just in case there is something funky in that junction. Lift it out of the plate, drop it in the bag without going over the top. Alright, so now that's done. I'm gonna set that aside. We're done with that one. Still got my label on it, so I can check when I label my bag. Make sure I label my culture price. 
All right, I'm going to stay low here, getting away from that uh, opening, so I'm not getting my fingers near that. Fold this up, leave some air puffed in the bag so it's easy to shake, and I'll seal it up with the impulse sealer. This impulse sealer has a 5 millimeter wide heating strip. I find that's quite helpful. I tried some of the uh, 2 mil and 3 mils, and they had a tendency to melt through the bag. I'll usually double seal it like this, hit it once, hit it again. This is on level 6, I think, of the heat. Anyway, then I hold it closed for a minute. I'm sure every impulse sealer is different, so I wouldn't recommend that you necessarily rely on my setting to be good for yours. But anyway, I hold it there long enough, let it cool after it's sealed, take it off. Check my seal. Everything looks good there. This is well, everything's sealed now in the bag. I can quit worrying about my oh, technique quite so much. So now I'm just going to go load it. So I'm going to take my plate here. I know Albino Gumby Gates F2T0. So we'll label our bag. So I just use a roll of tape uh, for this. So now I know this is Albino Gumby Gates, which is Albino Gumby crossed with Albino Emerald Gates. This is the only cross I've done with those two, so I know which one it is uh, when I go back to plates. And I'm just going to take that and put it on my bag. So now that is on my bag. Everything's labeled. I know what it is. And when I go to send this bag, I can just take the uh, tape off, move it to my bag or my tub or whatever I'm using. And I don't have to worry about mislabeling and that sort of stuff. So now I've got all the agar sitting in here on top, kind of as you can see. I'm just going to shift it, let it go to the bottom, let this grain kind of roll over the top of it. I'll use my hand just to kind of uh, get in there and kind of hold that in place and let that grain roll over the top. And then that just helps get the grain into the middle, I mean the agar into the middle of the grain. As you can see, so that mixes everything in fairly easily without doing a whole bunch of crazy shaking and trying to mix and then I just get all the grain out of the gussets and let's see just kind of pat it down now you can see I've got agar here here you know there's little chunks scattered around so that should inoculate it fairly well um, you see a piece there and maybe there's a piece sticking through here somewhere but anyway um, up here but anyway that should distribute the agar and allow that now I'll put this in a storage tote and let it sit less than a month. It should be fully colonized for a grain bag that size. And hopefully if it's clean, I will send it to substrate. At some point we'll show you that process. And I'm just going to go back and look at my next plate and we'll see what we got next. I'm going to put you on pause for a second while I adjust the camera. Alright, got the camera moved and we'll see what's next. I'm going to re-sanitize my hands and wrap up the backup plate I just made for that last culture we saw. Oh, I got it here. Wrap her up. I grab around the edges there when I'm wrapping, especially when my hands are wet with alcohol. I find if I grab in the middle and it's slippery, I'll end up squeezing too much and it cracks the lid. So I grab around here on the edge, stretch my tape out, go for about two wraps. Then I usually go to the bottom here, kind of use that edge to cut it, peel it towards the edge, and that leaves me a little tag there. As you can see, I've got that little tag. I can then when I go to peel it up, that's easy to find. This grafting tape can be really sticky. It also looks neat. Everything's fine. So I've got, you know, all my transfers on there. That's my backup plate. I'm going to set it aside in case that grain bag fails. Now, what I'm going to do, i got this plate here. It's another multi-spore. Uh, Roger Rabbit 2 cross with Iceberg number 1. This is the third generation from Spore. Multi-spore plate. This one looks fairly clean. I don't see any real bad spots. There's some darkness here. That's really just pigmentation left from the... Uh, dye. I suspect the food coloring I use has already consumed all that. It's not blue anymore. But everything else looks fairly decent from what I can see through the lid. So we're going to sanitize that one and see what it looks like. Just spraying it down with alcohol, getting everything nice and wet, smearing it around, making sure if there's any bacteria or anything on the outside of the plate from previous handling, it will kill it. Oh, hands on, we get a grain bag ready. So let's see, uh, get a plate ready, another backup plate. This one's a little foggy, but I don't think it's too bad. Definitely going to 
to swing off. That's really light mist, so we're going to leave that alone. All right, let's see. This is Roger Rabbit 2. backup plate for my T0 if that does happen to fail. So that way I haven't lost it if it does. And now I'm just going to go look for my tag where I left that when I peeled the stuff off. And we're going to open her up. Oh. No, let's see if I need to zoom in anymore or not to let y'all see what's going on. I think I'll try zooming back in a bit. Oh, maybe that'll be better and still be clear enough you can see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to sanitize and sterilize my scalpel again. Wiping down the handle with alcohol one more time in case I get anything funky on there from touching it dealing with it last time. And I'm going to re-sterilize. Get the blade good and red hot. And then we're going to pick some various dicarions to save as backups. This plate looked like it had quite a few more germination points. Those uh, swabs made a lot of spores, so, or mushrooms made a lot of spores. So, I got my backup plate ready. Let's see if I can scoot this over a little bit when I'm in a little bit better position to work in. If I'm not making anybody seasick. Alright, now I get to do my hands again because I just touched my filthy camera. So, I'm going to re sanitize my hands. I did wipe my camera down with alcohol before I started, but still, if you touch anything, it's a good idea to re sanitize. Alright, now let's see. So, now I got my backup plate here. I've uh, got my transfer plate there. I'm going to take the lid off, set that down, out of my way, in the float. And we're going to take a look at this. Try not to touch the edge too much. Oh, floppy finger on my glove. Alright, this one's pretty well grown in already. It's going to be hard to select single uh, die carry-ons off. There was so much germination on that plate. As you can see, there's just a million little specks where spores went off. So I'm just going to grab various transfers. Each one is very likely to have multiple dicarions. I'm not really concerned. It will actually give me more selections for the next multi-spore if this one does fail. So let's just make some transfers real quick. I don't think on this one it really matters where I get them. There's so much stuff on here. So And everything looks fairly clean. So what I'm going to do on this one is let my blade cool. And I'm going to go and just cut a strip. All right, now I've got my transfers all ready. I don't want to cooperate. That should give me plenty of backup by carry-ons. The camera's kind of in the way. Normally I would swoop that close to going over the top of the plate with my hand. That wasn't a great move, so always be aware of those sterile technique issues. Cover that back up for a second. All right, now I'll re-sanitize my hands one more time. And I'm going to zoom back out. So now I have my backup plate with all my various backup die carry-ons selected, stuck on there. In case this uh, multi-spore does fail, although this one looks fairly clean, I feel relatively certain it'll be fine. So I want to zoom back out and we'll try to give you all a better look. Stand by. All right, here we go. Let's see if we get this done one more time. So I'm just going to sanitize my hands, sanitize my bag.
scissors have been standing out before I started working, so anyway. Alright, we're going to get up here in front of the flow again. Break the seal on that bag, let it suck some air in. You always see the grain shear as it kind of sucks air in. I just don't want to pull air in too fast. Because I could suck in stuff from above the flow if I pull a big draft down. So we're just going to slowly open it. Staying below the opening. Not getting in front of it so that I don't let anything blow over the top and go in there. So we'll pop that open. Alright. One more spritz while I'm at it. And I'm going to re sterilize my scalpel. Just getting bladed good and red hot. Alright, now I'm going to cover my plate. Making sure not to get over the top of it. Alright. Here again, we have that mycelium growing up around the edge. So I'm just going to go around. I don't like it when it peels up like that, so I'll go back in and cut so it doesn't drag that dirty mycelium, or what is potentially dirty mycelium, into the plate. Usually the lower angle you keep your scalpel, the less of that you'll have. If you hold it like this, you'll get more of that dragging up. So we'll try to keep it fairly flat to the plate. Go around the edge and cut that loose. Now I've got a kind of a chunk of mycelium here. I'm going to get that off. Point it down, and I'm going to re-sterilize in case that tuff had anything from the edge of the plate on it that was funky. Get that sterile. Oh, well, grabbing the edge of the plate. All right, so now I'm just going to go in here, make some wedges. Hopefully this is all in frame for y'all. Probably more wedges than I really need. Anyway, so now I'm just going to go flake them out. Drop it in the bag. Just staying out. You don't want to get on top of it. Sometimes it flakes. Don't really want to cooperate like that. Make it work. This is because I use a fairly soft agar recipe, so sometimes it'll stick. If it does, I just kind of go under it like that, cut it loose, lift it up. That'll be plenty. Drop that in. This is definitely a soft batch of agar. selections. Well, definitely a soft batch of agar. I usually use fairly wet agar for my germ plate, so it's not unusual that I have that issue. I haven't found it really makes a difference. Alright, now I'm going to fold it up. There's a little bit of stuff stuck on the top there, so I'm going to be careful there. Then I'm just going to go in here and seal it, leaving that part outside the bag. And leaving enough margin that if there is anything on that edge, I've sealed in you know, close enough this way that whatever is trapped outside the bag is not in. Hit it once, hit it again, and then we'll let that cool for a second while we get our label ready. So this one was Roger Rabbit 2. Again, I'll just let that flop to the side, let the agar run over the top of it so that it's around the middle of the mix in well in the bag. Just gives it, it spreads the inoculation points out more where it's not all clumped in one corner. 
thought. Now that should be well mixed. It's all inside the grain there. And that one's ready to go too. And that's the basic process when I'm sending multi spores uh, or really any plate. Uh, we just cut the wedges, drop it in the agar. This is the, mainly it's a discussion here. Just, just talking about the multi spore plates, I guess, is probably the most useful bit. And, uh, you know, the aspects of them, why I want multiple dicarions. It's just really. So that when those fruit, these are, uh, I'm trying to stabilize traits, they're fine traits I want to stabilize in these early generations of the crosses. Often with a cross, you get a lot of different things. Um, as the genetics recombine, you see many different phenotypes and stuff. So this just gives me a chance to fruit them. I send the whole plate, all those germinations on it, fruit it all. Uh, hopefully I'll see a few different expressions from those. Sometimes the, there's a dominant you know, that just takes over the whole tub. Maybe you won't see much until the second flush or something, but often the more multi-spores you run, the more opportunities you have to get various different phenotypes and new isolations and such from your cross or from anything you're doing, really. So if you're looking for something new and unique, uh, that's probably the best way to do it. Run a lot of dicarions and try to find something new. When you find it, you clone it, save it to a plate, and then you can grow it again by itself and really see how it performs in a tub by itself where it doesn't have a lot of competition. So in the multi-spore tubs, I don't ignore the little weirdos. If I get anything, even if it's a little strange one in the corner, um, and you do, if, if it looks neat, you like it, clone it and grow it. You never know. That little weirdo in the corner might turn out to be a great uh, isolation, cultigen selection, whatever you want to call it, uh, once you give it room to fruit by itself without other competing dicarions in the tub or bag with it. So that's kind of what that process is about for me. Um, I guess this video is mainly just about sending multispores, how to try to save one if it's a bit contaminated with bacteria, yeast, something like that. If it's a sporulating mold, I don't bother uh, trying to save those. But with something like we just showed, the, a little bit of yeast or bacteria, some little spots here and there, you can cut that out and often save it. And then I still have my backup plates. So if it does, uh, if the bag fails, all I've lost is a bag of grain or a substrate or whatever. If I mix that together, not really that huge of a risk to me. I don't mind that. So if it does fruit and I get uh, my stuff to pick, then I've got a lot of various selections to choose from to move forward for my next generation. So then I can take spores from those, run them in another multi-spore plate, or, and try to grow those out. And with any luck, the things that I'm selecting for, you know, whatever, be it shape, size, color, whatever, uh, potency, anything you're interested in. If you keep selecting for fruits that you know have that trait, taking spores from them, moving forward with that in further generations, the hope is that you'll stabilize those traits within that uh, by moving forward and selectively pressuring the collagen into just giving you what you're looking for by selecting those every time you breathe. So that's about the basics of it. I hope you all have a good day, and we'll see you all on the next video. Have a nice one.